Hello everybody, Chris Abug here, and today I'm going to show you how I paint stylized hair. This tutorial is brought to you by Clip Studio Paint. As many of you probably know by this point, a lot of my artwork is done in Clip Studio Paint, so I am extremely excited to be working with them for this tutorial. Let's get started. I want to focus most of our time on coloring and painting the actual hair for this tutorial, but first a couple of tips for drawing the hair. The first tip is to remember to visualize the skull underneath the hair. This might mean you need to draw in the skull, like basically drawing a bald head before you draw the actual hair. If you aren't sure about the skull shape from a particular angle, in Clip Studio Paint, there's a really handy feature where you can just pull in a 3D figure to help you out. You can just come over to the materials, go to the 3D section and find a figure to pull into your drawing. And you can just drag and drop this 3D model in and then adjust the pose, adjust the angle. You can even come over and adjust the proportions of the actual figure. And once you have the 3D model lined up to use as a guide, you can make sure to drag your line art layer above the 3D model layer, and then you can adjust the opacity of the 3D model layer down and simply use your brush or your pencil to trace over the back of that skull to make sure you have it right in your drawing. Now that you know where the skull is and how big it is, it's important to choose where the hair is starting from. So of course the hair is coming out from all of the skull, but most of us have a part or multiple parts, or if our hair is pulled back into like a ponytail or slicked back, it will be starting from the front of the head. So basically here is where I recommend you decide where is the part in the hair going to be? You can start to think about, okay, what direction is the hair going to be flowing to? So if there is parted hair, then the hair is going to be flowing out away from the part. Another important thing to keep in mind when drawing hair is to draw it in chunks. When you draw chunks of hair, remember to vary the sizes of the chunks. You should have a range of big chunks, medium chunks, and small chunks of hair. You'll notice in the bangs, there's different size hair chunks in where her hair is pulled back and then also where it is uh, hanging down. And so I'm just going to kind of show that the big chunks are in red and then the medium chunks I'm just going to draw in green just to kind of show you the different sizes. And then also the small chunks we'll just show in blue. Next, I just want to show a couple of shapes that I tend to draw a lot when I'm drawing hair. So I do a lot of like swooshy shapes and then if the hair is somewhat wavy or loosely curling or wrapping around itself, I will sometimes show that overlap by first drawing a swooshy line and then drawing another little swooshy shape to taper the end of the hair to look kind of like a hook. Um, but then on the inside of that hook, I draw another little bit of hair and this can make it look like the hair is actually wrapping around itself a bit as it curls at the end. To continue this idea even more, further up on the hair, I draw a swoosh on the opposite side of the original line to indicate the other side of the hair before it overlaps and curls around. The next thing I think is important to keep in mind is the different forces that act on hair. And generally that is like tension and gravity. Although sometimes I guess it could be wind or water depending on the environment. Hair can be bunched and pulled to different points of tension. A really common point of tension is something like all of the hair being bunched into a ponytail by an elastic or a scrunchie, or maybe some hair being bunched into like a hair clip or a hair barrette. To indicate this tension, you can usually just draw a few lines that pull into that point of tension. You don't really want to overdo it with too many lines, just a couple of effective lines are better to communicate that tension than like too many messy lines. Okay, once you are done with your hair line art or sketch, it's time to move into color. I am first going to create a new layer underneath the line art layer. And then I'm going to pick my base color and I use a hard round brush to paint in the base color on this new layer. 
In Clip Studio Paint, I like to use the G Pen brush, but any hard brush without transparency will do. The point is to just fill in where the hair is for this uh, base color. I basically just use this hard brush to paint around the edges, creating a closed shape um, eventually, and then I will use the fill bucket to fill that shape. And then from here is when I layer lock. So let me show you. I just use this lock transparent tool on the, uh, the layer I'm using right now. That makes it so that when I paint now, I won't be painting outside of the lines. So the next step is to basically add some very soft gradients to your hair. And to do that, I just like to use a soft airbrush like this. The important thing to keep in mind when you're adding gradients to hair is that usually the roots of the hair will be a little bit darker. So I color pick the base tone I have and then I move my color down a little bit and then slightly more saturated to create those darker shades for kind of the roots closer to the scalp. And then once you do that, you kind of do the same thing, but instead you move the color up into the left a little bit to make the ends of the hair a little bit lighter. So if you'll notice that in most hair, the closer you get to the scalp, the darker it is, the closer you get to the ends of the hair, the lighter it is. And so that is the general rule I try and follow. Time to move on the, to the next step, which is shading. So you need to create another new layer and you wanna put this layer right on top of your base color layer. And then we're going to switch the layer mode to hard light. For those of you who have seen my skin coloring tutorial or my shading tutorial, this might look quite familiar because I use the same principles no matter what I am shading. I like to use this hard light method. It works pretty well, especially with hair. For this new layer, you need to toggle on the clip to layer below. In clip Studio Paint is just this little button right here and you can tell when it's clipped to the layer below because it gets that little red bar next to the layer. And for the shadow color, I like to go with a kind of desaturated grayish, purplish or grayish pinkish kind of color like you can see here. Um, it doesn't matter if it's exactly perfect because you can go back and change and adjust this color as you need to. What's important is that you're able to actually see um, the color when you draw it on. And then grab a hard brush. Here I'm just using the G Pen brush again, but I might later on switch it up to have a little bit more texture but i just start blocking in the shadows with this hard brush doesn't have to be perfect because i'm going to be switching back and forth between um, the eraser and the brush to really kind of carve these shadow shapes to be what i want i try and make sure that i have the larger shadow shapes blocked in and then once i have like that general shape idea for the shadows then i start thinking about the hair chunks and how those chunks are overlapping and would cause some shadows on top of each other and i try to not get too complicated at this step like we don't want to be shading every single strand of hair shade it as if it's like blocks or chunks not necessarily like hair at least not yet we will add some more little hair details later this is more to get the actual volumes of the hair and once i have that basic shading in for the blocks then i can start to add a little indication of just like one strand here or there in the shadows again don't get like too many but just like one every once in a while can add a little bit of texture and it can feel pretty nice before we move on to actual highlights a handy feature if you are wanting to adjust the color of the hair or just see what it looks like as a different color is to select the base color, go to edit, tonal correction, hue, saturation, lumosity, and then it will pull up these sliders that you can mess around with and see what other colors of hair kind of look like. Lighter, darker, more saturated. You can even if you lower the saturation, move into a little bit more natural hair colors, which I haven't been working with much in this tutorial, but it is, it is possible that you can find some like blonde or brown hair. But uh, yes, it's a very handy feature in Clip Studio Paint to make some quick color adjustments. Let's add some highlights. Create a new layer, lock to the layer below. So we want these highlights to also be locked to the base color layer. Um, and then switch the layer mode to overlay. 
And now you want to choose a, a lighter color to make this overlay. The actual color you choose can depend on your light source, but don't worry, you can always color adjust doing the same method hue saturation luminosity that I just showed you later on if you want to change the highlight color. And as you can see, because we're using an overlay layer mode, it's a little bit transparent. Some of the color that we're coloring over is like popping through and that's just what we want. So the first thing I like to do is I kind of just like to scribble in a sort of large highlight because I am thinking about how does hair highlight. It follows the strands of the hair. That's why I am coloring uh, along the flow of the hair, if that makes sense. And then just kind of making these big shapes. The shapes don't have to be nicely shaped at all. They could just be scribbles like with what I'm doing, because what we're going to do is we are going to, once we have these shapes in, use the eraser to come in and make these shapes a little bit nicer. Start erasing first from where I have colored over some of these shadows. I don't really want highlights in the shadows too much. And then I start erasing from kind of the center. Um, and I make these sort of U shapes, make it so that there's more highlight on the edges of the hair chunk and then it squeezes in and there's less highlight in the middle. It just gives like gives that uh, that highlight effect when it comes to things like hair and like brushed metal. And I try and include a little bit of texture in these highlights, but still I am not drawing every single strand of hair. This is still like pretty big shapes actually. So now that I'm pretty happy with the highlight shapes, what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of texture in by using the eraser or a smaller brush to just kind of make a couple little strands here and there, erasing a little bit, and then also adding in just one or two small highlighted strands kind of coming out of these highlight shapes. Not too many again, it's just little tiny details. So for this character, I decided that I did want to adjust her hair color again a bit more. So I opened up that hue saturation luminosity that I showed you earlier, and you can feel free to do this at any point in your process to play with your colors. And then I actually went back down to the base, the base layer and with a soft airbrush, I adjusted some of those initial gradients that I painted at the beginning of our process to add a little bit more color variation and ombre kind of look into her hair. So I added more purples at the ends of her hair, more pinks and purples at the ends of her hair, and darker blues towards the roots of her hair. But I think that this is looking pretty good. So it's time to move on to the next step, which is going to be the paint over. This is what I usually do. You don't always need to do this step, but uh, I often like to do it. So I just created a new layer and I put it on top of everything. It's even above my line art layer. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding in a few little details. I'm doing a couple things. I'm adding in a few details of like little strands of hair that might be coming outside of the line art to add a little bit more organic like messiness to the hair. And then what I'm also doing is I'm painting over some areas where maybe I'm not as satisfied with the shape or it seems too rigid. By this point, I'm almost done with painting the hair. And sometimes I will reach the stage and I will notice that, oh, I wish the shape was slightly different or curved slightly different, but I don't want to have to redraw and repaint a bunch of the hair. So what I'll do is I will combine all of the hair layers and then I will select where I want to change. And then I can go to the liquify tool in Clip Studio Paint and I have all of these options where I can nudge the hair around, which is probably what I do the most often. But sometimes I will also bulge or pinch or twist and it has all of these uh, settings that I can play with to adjust the shape to be closer to something that I am really happy with. Because the background of this scene is all just so white, I thought, well, it might be nice if we add, make a new layer and add glow layer. I'm just taking this kind of pale like yellow and I'm just brushing in with a soft airbrush around some of the edges of her hair. She has this whole like white ambiance around her and so it just made a little bit of sense to me that the, it, around the edges of her hair she might it might fade a little bit into that white and so that's why I did that step. It's not necessarily required for every scene. 
but it can add a little bit to your shading if you color pick from the ambient scene and just add a little bit of that color to the edges of your character and especially the hair since hair tends to be pretty reflective. So I highly recommend playing around with the different layer styles and see what suits your artwork the best. And that is how I paint stylized hair. <laughs> I hope it was helpful and another huge shout out to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to give Clip Studio Paint a try, they offer a free trial. And as someone who uses Clip Studio Paint basically every day, <laughs> I can certainly recommend it. If you found this video helpful and you are looking for more artist and art tutorial type videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would certainly appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful, fabulous rest of your day. Happy drawing, everybody.